Let's look at the document structure in SAP Financial Accounting. Every day, hundreds of financial documents are created in your company. So there needs a structure to identify each of these documents. For example, you need to identify which are the expense documents, the payroll documents, the incoming invoices, etc. So this can be done by giving each document a document type ID and a number. For example, these are all my expense documents and I can give a document number for that. This will make it easier for both internal and external auditors as well as for your local finance team to identify the documents. Especially when you have years and years of documents stored, if you identify the document by a means of a document number, it helps to speed up the process for auditing and tracking purposes. In SAP, the document principle means the identification of a document by a document number, a company code and a fiscal year. In this example, you can see the box highlighted by green is the document header. The header of the document applies to all the line items in the document. For example, this document was created with the document number 1 followed by many zeros. The date the document was created is displayed over here. The currency of the document is shown here. To which company code this document belongs to is entered here. The posting date is also shown. The fiscal period or the fiscal year is shown along with the period. So all this information is common to all the line items below. So that's why this is called the document header. The red box indicates the document line items. For this document, there are two line items. Each document must have at least two line items, one for a debit and one for a credit. There can be as many line items as you want in a document, but a maximum of 999. In other words, there has to be less than 1000 line items in a document. There are two control keys in a document. One is the document type which controls the header and the other is a posting key which controls the line items. Now in a document header, as you can see in this image, there is a document type. In this example, it's called SA which means a GL account document. Like this, there are many different document types example KR for vendor invoices, DR for customer invoices and so on. Each of these document types are already provided to you by SAP. If you want, you can also create your own document types. But the ones provided by SAP should be enough for your company purposes. The document type controls all the header information. It will mention which fields are mandatory, hidden, display or optional. It can also tell you which fields can be <coughs> changed. The posting key controls the line item. As we saw in our earlier screen, the two line items, each one has its own posting key. The common posting keys for debits for a GL account is 40 and for credits it's 50. The posting key controls the line items and in this li each line item which fields are again hidden, optional, required or will just display. So the, there are two control keys in a document. One is the document type which controls the header, the document type and the posting key which controls the line items. Let's look at the document type in more detail. 
as we saw earlier in our slide, it controls the header and used to identify the business transactions. For example, KR for vendor invoices, DR for custom invoices, KG for vendor payments and so on. The document types are created at the client level, which means all the company codes can use the same document type. Any changes you do to the document type also affects all the company codes which use that. So it's important not to change the existing document type properties in SAP. If you want to do any changes, copy that document type and rename it to have your own document type. The document types also define the number range for which the document number will be assigned. It's best that each document type has its own number range. So it's easily identifiable for what purpose the document was created for. The document types also assign which accounts it can post to, whether a customer, a vendor, an asset, a material or general ledger account. The document type also assigns the field status of the document header fields, which document header fields are again suppressed, required, optional or displayed. You can also specify that the document type is only for batch input only. Now batch input means it's loaded at a using a development program such as legacy system migration workbench which is also called LSMW or any other ABAP or customized programs. So this means this using that particular document type you can only load via a development program and you cannot post using a journal entry for that document type. Let's go and configure a document type now. The SAP configuration menu path for document type is Financial Accounting New, Financial Accounting Global Settings New, Document Types, Document, Document Types and then Define Document Types for Entry View. The short transaction code for this is OBA7. You can execute the transaction. You can see all the standard document types are already provided by SAP. For example, you have the document type AB, which is an accounting document type. If you double click that, you can see it's been assigned a number range. The reversal of this document type is also mentioned, that is if you reverse this document type to be in which document type should it post to, that's also AB. Which are the account types it can be posted to, assets, customer, vendor, material, GL account, whether it can only be posted by a batch or not, whether it can negative postings be permitted, intercompany postings permitted, all those information are provided over here. Which are the entries required during a document entry, the reference number, the document header text. If you tick on this, this will be a mandatory field. So this document type controls the header information of the document. We are not going to do any changes to the existing ones, so we will go back. Let's look at another document type, for example a vendor document type. Vendor invoice. So you can see document type is number is the ID is given, KR vendor invoice, it's been defined a number range. The reversal of this vendor document type, you can see they are mentioned as KA. It's a different document type. Now let me create my own document type. So I'm going to use the letter Z for it. Click on new entries. And I'll call it ZK. Press enter. Give it a number range. Maybe 20. Reverse document type also I'll mention it's the same document number. ZK. And I'll say it's only vendors and GL accounts can be posted to that document. And save. I'm getting a message saying that ZK does not exist in a table, which means this reverse document type has not been created because we are still going to create it now. 
So for now, I will not specify it. I'll just choose an existing document type, probably KZ vendor payment. Press enter in your keyboard. Press continue for the transport request number. Now the document type has been created with ZK. Click on the back arrow and you can give it a description. So I will call it Bank EFT Electronic Fund Transfer Payment and click on Save. So that's how you create a new document type. Now of course this is a rare scenario where usually the current document type provided by SAP should be adequate for your company's needs. But in the event that you have a transaction and you need to monitor it separately via a different document type, then you come to the screen and create your own document type. Now that we have created a new document type, we need to assign to document number range. Let's look at document number ranges. Number ranges can be two types for documents. One is internal or external. And the number range is defined at the company code level. And for each fiscal year, you, need to, you can specify the number range separately. Or you can even specify for up to a future fiscal year. Like in this example, I have given 9999 and given a number range. The advantage of giving it up to a future fiscal year is that for every year you don't have to go into the system and maintain the number range. Now let's look at maintaining the number range in the SAP configuration path. So it's almost the same path like maintaining a document type except that under document you go and select document number ranges. And in document number ranges under documents in entry view select Define document number ranges for entry view. The short transaction code for this is FBN1. Let's execute this. You need to define for which company code you want to maintain the number range. So I'm going to specify as Z123, my company code, and click on intervals. Now there are no number ranges maintained. So we can specify the number ranges here. It's always easier to copy the number ranges from an existing company code setting. Or we can specify the number ranges separately. For this example, I'll click on interval and I'll give a number range starting for 20 because that's a document type we created recently and we have assigned a number as 20. Here I'll put up to 9999 from number I'll start with 20, all zeros to 20, all 9. It's always recommended to have document number ranges as internal numbering. So do not click this external button. Because document numbers will be going into thousands and later hundreds of thousands. So you do not want the users to go and key in a document number. It should automatically be generated by the system. Click on this insert button again. And that's how you add the document number range. Click on save. Again, you do not transport document number ranges. So we'll just ignore this message by clicking on continue. And you have assigned a document number range for the document number set of 20. Now let's go back and check. We have created a new document type. Call ZK and there we have assigned the number range 20. If you click on the number range information, it again take you back to the same screen. You key in our company code, you click on intervals, and the number range is already there. That's how you create a document number range. 
Now it's recommended that if you are just started to create a fresh company code and you want to define the number range, it's much easier copying from an already existing company code. So you don't have to go and enter all the number ranges in the system. So let's try to do that. Define document number ranges for interview. Let's click on that again. Now let's go to our company code and we'll delete the number range which we have just created. So we can actually do a copy from another company code. So let's select our line item and click on this icon, delete interval. And let's save. Now for you to be able to delete that interval, there should not be any documents posted in that. Let's click on continue. And now let's try to copy. Click on the copy icon. You can copy from an existing company code. So let's choose this one, SAP AG company code to the one your freshly created company code, that one, two, three, and click on this copy icon. Now you can see you got a message saying company code from 001 was copied to Z123. Now let's go and view the number ranges. Click on the interval icon and you can see all the number ranges have been maintained automatically. You can scroll down and see. So this allows you the some time so that you don't have to go and enter all this manually. You can just go back now. And that's how you can copy from one company code to another. Let's look at another control function of the document, which is the posting key. Now posting key controls the functions of the line items. Just like the document type, the posting key is also maintained at the client level. Hence it's valid for all company codes. So it's recommended that you do not go and change the standard posting keys in the system. Furthermore, it's recommended not to create any additional posting keys in SAP because the ones provided are more than adequate for your current needs. So what does the posting key control? One, what type of account it can post to. Just like we saw for document type, the posting key also controls whether the do document can be posted at the line item level for a customer, a vendor, asset, material or general ledger account. Is the line item going to be posted as a debit or credit, another control aspect of the posting key. And the field status of the additional details of the line item level for the posting key. So a drop down menu of the posting key will look something like this. The posting key number is given. The account type is given. V is for vendor, G is for GL accounts, A is for assets and so on. And it's showing whether it's going to be debit or credit. C is for credit, D is for debit and the posting key name is also given here. Now let's look at some of the posting key configuration. We will not do any changes, but we'll just have a look at the screens. The configuration menu path for posting key is financial accounting new, financial accounting global settings new, under document is defined posting keys short transaction code is OB41. Once again, do not make any changes to this transaction. Click on define posting keys. Let's check an existing posting key. Posting key 01, invoices, which will have a debit posting for customer account types. Just double click that. And you can see it's already been indicated as a debit indicator for customer invoices, which account it can be posted to customer now you can see, unlike the document type, we have options to select one or many of the account types. For posting key, it can only be selected to one account type. And there are other attributes which you can select for a posting key. Now for a posting key, if it's 01, is invoices, there will always be a reversal of a posting key. Now here it's mentioned as 1, 2 or 12. Let's go and check what is 12. 12 is reversal of the invoice. So the invoice, if you reverse, it's a reversal of the invoice. 
and if you check the reverse invoice information and it's 01 as a reversal posting key so it's corresponding against each other now you can see the reversal of an invoice the indicator is credit and again can only be posted against a customer there are other attributes also you can select for example whether it's going to be sales related if it's a special GL account or if it's going to be a payment transaction let's have a look at another posting key bank charges this again bank charges for customers so again the posting key is given this debit to which account type can be posted it's not going to be any sales related information and the reversal posting key given us 13 like that there are many posting keys in the system you can have a look at all different type of posting keys for different type of account types it's important to know that for GL accounts the commonly used posting key is 40 for debit entry and 50 for credit entries and that's how you go and see the posting key configuration in the system inside each of the posting key configuration you also have the maintain field status group icon so if you click that it will show you all the field status groups for a posting key we saw earlier the posting key controls the field status of the line items so let's just select one general data field status and see and here it's shown that it's showing all the optional entries for assignment number, text, invoice reference and so on and for inflation index it's making that field hidden similarly for additional account assignments you can see all the information kept as optional again it's not recommended to do any changes to the existing posting keys just to have a look and have an idea you can click on maintain field status icon now let's have a recap of what we have learned we learned about the document principle a document has a header and a line item each document is identified by a document number a company code and a fiscal year we saw the document type controls the header line items and the posting key controls the line item levels document type controls header posting key controls line item those are the two control types and in the document type you define the number range for each company code which account types it can be posted to customer vendor assets material or general ledger the field status of each group the field status of the header items etc and in the posting key we just saw recently that the account type it can be posted to whether it's going to be a debit or a credit the reversal posting key similarly for document type also you have the reversal document type and the additional fields which is the field status group for the line item level it controls so that's the document type and posting key these are maintained at the client level so it's recommended not to change the existing ones and for posting key you do not have to create any new posting key because the one provided by SAP should be sufficient. Now for your assignment, check the existing document type settings. Also check the existing posting key settings. Do not make any changes to the existing settings in the system as the current document types and posting keys are adequate for your document postings. Now to enable the document paste posting, you must copy the document number range from company code, for example, 0001 to your newly created company code. That will allow you to post to all the fiscal years. 